We are so excited to have the winningest coach in Grizzlies history and Zach Randolph's head coach for most of his time here in Memphis, Lionel Hollins. Thank you so much for joining us. First off, how excited are you for tonight to see Zebo finally have his day in the sun? I'm excited. I think it's a great honor for Zebo. His one is definitely due. Uh, it's not overdue, but it's due. And uh, I'm excited that the Grizzlies are honoring him by uh, retiring his number. Well, you've been around this franchise in a variety of roles uh, throughout just about every era, including out in Vancouver. But how much of an impact did Zebo make specifically on ushering in this grit and grind era? Well, I think he was the cornerstone for it. I know we had a lot of good young players and Mark and Rudy and Mike and OJ and, and Tony Allen. But um, Zach was the anchor. He was the one that gave us the confidence with his ability to score and rebound and to make plays in big moments that won games. So um, he, he's, the, he's the cornerstone of, of, of the foundation that was being laid, that grew, and to be in a team that could uh, you know, win 55-plus games and go to the uh, Western Conference Finals. Uh, and even in our first you know, playoff uh, series win, in our first playoff game, Zach was huge in that series where San Antonio had no answers for him. Now, you've told me before that the Grizzlies really became the Memphis Grizzlies during those runs that you guys had. How much did Zebo specifically, his personality, his persona, how did that help make this Memphis his team? Well, I think, uh, you know, he epitomized grit and grind, blue collar, put on a hard hat and come out and, and work every day. And uh, that's what the city of Memphis uh, personifies, you know, putting in a day's work and doing what's necessary to get the job done. And Zebo epitomized that and... Uh, I think um, when he came here, um, he wasn't openly welcomed by a, a lot of people. But over time, Zebo won the city over with his play on the court, with his personality, and also uh, with his uh, uh, community service work. And, and all that said, how fitting is it that he is the first of the core four, the first Grizzlies player in franchise history to have his jersey go up in the rafters? Well, I think it, it, it's important that he is. Uh, you know, you know, no disrespect to Powell Basal, but, um, you know, Zach won a playoff game, won a playoff series. We go to the second round, we go to the semifinals twice, and we also go to the finals. So I think that he's the person that, you know, when you look back on the, the current success now, then you have to add where it is start and I think it started with with Zebo even though you know we went to the playoffs a couple of times before he was even here um, to, to start winning and, and building a foundation of, of respect actually started when we won playoff series against San Antonio and I know you must have a treasure trove of them but is there any one story about Zebo that you think really defines who he is and his time here in Memphis no there there are a lot of stories and uh, you know I I, I one thing that I remember was the, the the fourth quarter against the Spurs, and we're up three two, and you know we don't want to go back to San Antonio three three, and Zach took over the game. Uh, he made every shot, got rebounds, and and there was no answers for him, and he just everybody jumped on his back, and and he carried us home, and and that's a memory that sticks in my mind uh, about Zach. And we'll end on one about you. I mean, we've seen you at FedEx Forum as, as a member of the Lakers, as a member of Lemoyne Owen most recently, where you're there as an assistant coach right now. What's it going to be like tonight to actually come back as a Grizzly, as a special guest for this night? Well, you know, it, it will be special, not just you know because I'm coming back into the arena, but the fact that we're honoring Zach. And I just feel like I, I, it's an honor and a privilege for me to uh, be able to come and witness him going up in the rafters or his number going up in the rafters. So uh, it's not about me. You know, my time was my time. And it, it's now about uh, Zach being honored tonight. And, and then everything else is about the current Grizzlies. And also, you had mentioned uh, in, in the Grizzlies documentary, they did a fantastic job on, on Zebo about uh, your role in helping him get here to Memphis. Can you tell me a little bit about how that all came together in the 20, uh, 2009 draft? Well, it, it, it started out because um, um, the uh, Clippers won the, uh, the draft lottery, and they, dra they right away said they were drafting Blake Griffith, and, and Zach was there. And in my mind, Blake Griffith was not on a level of Zach Randolph, 
but you know he was a he was a good pick for the franchise, and I knew that in order for them to make him the face of the franchise, Zach had to go. And uh, and I mentioned that in a meeting as we were talking about well, the draft, and I said we can get Zach Randolph. I think he's available, and not everybody was on board with it. But you know, with a little bit of selling and stating the case of why we should, it went through. And once we got him, things changed, and uh, the, the toughness, the the mentality, the culture, everything changed. Do you think you guys would have even had remotely the amount of success that you had had, had it not been for Zach Randolph entering the picture? Who knows? I, I, I don't know. You know, we were coming as a team, but again, he was the cornerstone that took us over the top. So, you know, I don't even speculate about what if. I, all I know is that we, we did it with him and he was the cornerstone. And now we honor what was especially, and you were there at the helm for all of it. Thank you so much, Lionel, for joining us, and we'll see you there tonight. My pleasure. Take care.